Welcome everyone to another month spotlight and today we're gonna have a look at a titan in the modding community, namely Azanor's Thumbcraft mod in its fourth edition. Many things and mechanics have changed dramatically since the previous version, so even players used to those versions will have trouble at first glance. So I decided to put together a short and sexy guide that will help you understand the most important mechanics, multi-block structures and research included in Thumbcraft 4. To get started, you will have to craft yourself the first basic wand, the iron-capped wooden wand. With it, you will be able to right-click a bookshelf and extract the Thumbonomicon, your in-game guide for the mod. Whenever you are unsure about something, it's worth checking this book for further information. You will find everything divided into different categories and everything you've discovered yet, you will be able to click for detailed instructions. To dig further into the mod, you'll have to do some mining. Thumbcraft introduces 8 new ores, 6 of which can be mined for shards. We have air, fire, water, earth, order and entropy scattered around the world. You will also find cinnabar and amber ores occasionally, but more to that later. Once you have acquired at least one of each type of the shards, you will be able to craft yourself a thermometer, which will help you detect environmental occurrences of thumbcraft, such as nodes, as well as give you the ability to scan blocks and entities for research points. Venture out with your thermometer to find your first aura node, press right click to analyze it and gain some research points for the aspects the aura contains. You will also be able to charge up your wand with those aspects by holding right click. Your basic wand can hold 25 of each of the 6 primal aspects. Beware that you risk destroying an aura node if you fully discharge it, while a node with at least one of each aspect still remaining will eventually recharge. The primal aspects are called Air, Aqua, Ignis, Ordo, Perditio and Terra. While on your journey to charge up your wand, you also want to scan every possible block and entity you come across. A lot of them you will not yet be able to scan, but every successful scan may give you new aspects to discover as well as research points towards the scanned object's aspects, which will come in handy later on when we're doing some actual research. Different aura nodes may contain different aspects to discover and charge. So now that we know a little bit more about our environment, it's time to set up a research station. To do that, we'll need two tables next to each other, a scribing tool on top of it and some paper within its GUI. You will also be presented with a list of aspects you've already discovered so far and now it's time to start combining them and hope for the best. Or check the wiki. For the sake of this spotlight, I cheated a few aura nodes into the game to get a head start in research points and be able to show off more features. To combine two aspects, click the ones you want and hit the red button. Note that this process will cost you one research point for the according aspects. Through this process, you may create new aspects that you might need for your research later on. So enough babbling around, I think it's time for our first actual research. To initiate a research, choose an aspect of your choice and hit the green button. If there is a research available using the chosen aspect, it will trigger a kind of a minigame to unlock said research. Since you know the aspect that triggered the research must be in the minigame, you can add it again to illuminate certain symbols. Most research in Thumbcraft uses more than one aspect, so it's up to you to trial and error the correct aspects to help you solve the puzzle. The goal of a research is to connect the glowing blue dot via the symbols you activated to the non-glowing dot. Now to achieve this you have to move certain symbols around. Click on a symbol and you will be able to see your options. Now note that glowing symbols cannot be moved, so you will have to remove the glow first, move them into position and use another aspect to activate them again. The connection points cannot be more than one space apart from each other for it to work. Once you manage to connect all the necessary symbols, you win the research. Beware that doing so will use up your scribing tools, which by the way you can refill by combining it in a crafting grid with an ink sack. When you have discovered something new, the respective tab in your Thumbonomicon will be highlighted and it's convenient for you to look up what it is all about. 
So now that we know how to research our stuff, I'm going to switch to the Creative Thumbonomicon in order to have access to all the nifty features I want to show off in this video. Firstly, we have the deconstruction table. This thing you can use to destroy your items, where every now and then you will be able to collect one of the primal aspects it's made of. Just another way to acquire some more research points. If you paid close attention, you saw that we need to make this item within an arcane work table. To create that table, simply use your wand on a single table and it will be transformed. Recipes within the arcane work table require certain amounts of aspects for it to work, which you can provide using your charged up wand. Note that better wands will give you a discount on aspects costs. Other small gadgets worth mentioning before we move on are the Goggles of Revealing, which will grant you the ability to see just like through a thermometer, and the Wand Foci, which will grant you certain spell effects on the costs of their respective aspects. Hit the F key to attach and cycle through foci you carry and shift plus F to remove them all together. Let's have a look at the crucible. To create one you have to place down a vanilla cauldron and use your wand on it. It will be transformed into a crucible which you will have to fill with water and heat up with a heat source such as lava, fire or night ore. To keep the crucible filled at all times, you can either use golems, which I'm gonna talk about later, or any other mod that is able to provide water through a piping system. Recipes within the crucible require certain aspects as well as a catalyst. To get the aspects, you will have to find items consisting of them and throw it in the crucible. It is up to you to find the best combination to not waste any materials. Since the recipe for Nitro requires 3 Ignis, 3 Lux and 3 Potentia, I'm going to throw 3 pieces of coal, 6 torches and a piece of glowstone as the catalyst into the crucible, which should give me 2 Nitor. Beware that if you wait for too long with adding the catalyst, you may lose some of the aspects within the crucible. Next up, we should have a look at the infusion process within Thumbcraft 4. This multi-block structure consists of a runic matrix, some arcane pedestals and other arcane stone blocks. Now check your Thermonomicon for detailed information on how to craft those. Place some arcane stone bricks and normal arcane bricks as a foundation, an arcane pedestal in the center and the runic matrix one block above. Note that the transformation of this multi-block structure requires 25 of each aspect in your wand. Since the worst possible wand even increases aspect costs, you will not be able to transform it unless you have accessories such as Thumbcraft's wizard robes to increase the efficiency of your wand. To be able to use the infusion process with more advanced recipes, you're going to need some pedestals evenly arranged around the infusion contraption. I'm going to add 8 pedestals right away for the sake of this test world. Well, now that we have our infusion table, we should also know how to use it to craft things such as Thumbcraft's tools. For this example, I want to craft myself a pickaxe of the core. The pickaxe of the core requires a thomium pickaxe in the center, so let's do that. Simply right click the pedestal with the object in your hand and it will be displayed. We're also going to need some shards, a diamond and a great wood log arranged on the pedestals around. Now unfortunately with all that we only just set it up. We also need to fuel the infusion for it to process what we have prepared. This is where the alchemical furnaces come in. Place it down somewhere in your world, feed it materials and coal to smelt into liquid form. What you can do now is place up to 5 arcane alembics stacked on top of the furnace to collect the various aspects in liquid form. Finally, to get the liquid aspects out of the alembics, you'll have to use warded jars and place them at the output of the alembics. Now you can simply break the jar again to carry the liquid around. So what I'm trying to explain here is that to get the infusion process working, you'll need enough Essentia and jars near your infusion station. In my case, I'll need 8 Ignis, 8 Perfodio and 8 Senses. I'll leave it up to you to find out what materials you need to smelt down to get those aspects. 
As you can see, I have all necessary essentia ready, so I can click the matrix with my wand to start the infusion process, which looks magnificent. It will start by draining the essentia you provided, and then it will devour the items on the pedestals. If you're lucky, the process will be successful and you can recover your new and powerful tool. There is more to know, such as items that will provide more stability, but this is how you use the infusion table on a basic level. Now let's have a look at Thumbcraft's golems and how to deal with them on a very, very basic level. Each golem has its stats and the pliable upgrade slots. Some will be faster and others will be stronger, it depends on what you really want. To make a golem functional, it requires a golem core, depending on the task he is supposed to do. So for instance, you can spawn a golem adjacent to a chest and assign him a gathering core, which will make him pick up anything that's on the ground and put it into the chest. You can even specify to only pick up certain items if you want to. To redirect golems, you're going to need the golemancy tools. Right click to redirect him, hit him to get him back and shift hit him to get the golem and the core individually. There are many cores which I don't want to get into too much detail. I mainly want you to be able to understand the individual processes and then discover the rest on your own. But rest assured that there is a lot of different cores and upgrades with which you can potentially achieve a whole lot. Now there's tons and tons of features, machines, blocks and mechanics that I haven't covered in this video, but this guide is mainly intended to get you started and familiar with the new features and mechanics in Thumbcraft 4 with a very short and smexy video. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any further questions or want to see a spotlight that covers more details of the mod, I suggest Direwolf20 Spotlight on it, which I'm gonna link in the description for you guys, of course. Other than that, have a great time and hopefully see you in the next one. Bye bye.